Hello and welcome to round two back nine action of the 26th annual Upstate Classic presented by Play It Again Sports and the Upstate Disc Golf Club. On catch game we have Hartford Burley. Drone footage Jonathan Monroe. And commentary team is Gabe Brown and Todd Lyon. On the card today we have Ben Wolf from Clemson, South Carolina. Ryan Mon from Simpsonville, South Carolina. Michael Johansson from Denver, North Carolina. And Steven Scoggins from Taylor, South Carolina. Hole 10 is a par 3, 275 foot shot with both the fairway and the basket sitting on the side of a hill. Throw carefully or you might fall victim to one of those famous Timmins rollaways. Welcome back. Back nine coverage of the second round of the Upstate Classic. There's a bunch of different ones on the course. As you see from the T sign there, it's about 280 feet. Par three uphill. Just to the left, rollaways are a thing. And Mr. Wolf throw a tomahawk. On the front nine, we had Ben Ryan and MJ all finish seven down, and Steven nipping at their heels at six. And so let's roll see away. if we can get any separation on the back. It's a good way for the course to create some. <laughs> yeah, we feel you, Ben. We feel you. It's funny, we came up to the course with this tree that's across the fairway after the storm. And I mean, this tree was massive. I mean, there's limbs everywhere. And like I said, our volunteer efforts to get all that moved was significant. Um, we couldn't get it all, but uh, what's left is a very small amount compared to what was there before. And all that Steven debris had to be, up. all that debris had to be walked uphill. Uh, it wasn't like you could leave it down at the bottom. It had to be walked uphill to be carried out. So it was a significant effort. Yeah, I went over to hole four to do cleanup over there for that reason. I didn't feel like walking up this hill carrying uh, carrying limbs. Tough roll for Ryan as well. Bang! <laughs> that was a great pot. It's, it's not that tough of a hill. Roll. Was that a koi? Was he putting with a koi? I love it. Good effort from a tough stance from Steven. That was MJ for par, so getting a bogey on this, yeah, not ideal. Let them clean up. Yeah, for real. 11, 320 feet. A little bit of an uphill finish with a low ceiling and potentials for rollaways down to the OB Creek on the right. Like I said, most of these guys are going to throw backhand here. Round 
one, we didn't have a single birdie on this hole on coverage. Let's see if we can do better. I thought it was getting right side of that tree and I'm going. Yeah, I'll get the right edge side of it. Oh, that, that right, right side of that tree is that. That, that means you're going OB in a crappy spot. That thing is a killer, yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's a good shot. Good throw. If that tree had been there, it would have stopped even a few inches shorter. Bit of an early release from Steven. Well, that's why they do that shot as a backhand. You get a little, get a little high, and it just buries into the hillside and takes care of you. So, so Timmins is one of the oldest public courses in the Upstate. I think Simpsonville City Park was technically put in before Timmins, but beyond that, this thing has been here for getting close to thirty years. And it was an original Harold Duval design of Innova, Innova fame. And Harold was actually the TD of the second ever Upstate Classic back in 2000, before the club took it over and has been holding it for the next 24 years. Little bit of a tricky stance for Ben right next to that root ball slash erosion, but a great drive. See if he can get his bird. There it is. That'll do. That was one of only two birdies from the open field this round. Davidson McMurray, who we saw in round one coverage, got the other bird. All right, hole 12, par three, 270 feet. Feeds downhill, a little right to left. Real danger is hitting an early tree in deflection. You just want to feed one through there and let it work and skip down to the basket for a birdie. But you got to get through the first trees. This is an absolutely righty friendly hole. Unless you have a beautiful lefty forehand like Ben Very nice. there. Got the last guardian tree on the left. Yeah, the trees give it and they take it away. Oh, 
tricksy little upshot that Stephen has here. That looks pretty good from here. But he makes it look pretty easy. It's a scary putt from that position. If you're chain high and you miss, you're probably going in the creek. It's a solo bird, I believe, right? Solo birdie from Ben. Everybody else taps out their par. Thirteen, a big turnover uphill, 305 feet. Not much danger except for the road on the left. You just got to have the muscle to get it there. Yeah, and Ben will be throwing something overhand here. It's it's fun to watch. Yeah, you know, That's just hit impressive. the basket. <clears throat> that is really, really impressive. You'll see Ryan and Steven throw forehand with great power, and they have the ability to get there, too. That's another great throw. I'm looking at it, but that's a long putt. And that's the turnover line that Todd was talking about. During the f first round, we were talking about in 2008, MJ shot a 17 down out here. The only hole he missed was a hole that no longer exists. It's off to the left side of the screen on the left side of the road. Kind of paralleling hole 13 here. Huh. It's probably one of the easier holes on the course that year. He's... 16 years later, probably still kicking himself for missing it. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be bothering him too much. Uh, he never lets his, his anger show in public. No, but he always does have a good attitude on the course that everybody should be envious of. Absolutely. If he gets bad luck, he just shrugs it off. Oh well, everybody gets bad luck. So hole 14, par 3, 160. Uh, little slight movement right to left, but very straightforward. You want to throw something into that hillside and park it for your birdie. This is a must birdie for these guys. It absolutely is a must birdie for the entire tournament over four rounds. I like that. 81% birdies on this hole. So if you lost strokes on this hole, you lost strokes to everybody. Yep. Several years ago, this basket was actually in a slightly easier location. So <laughs> easy that hole 14 didn't count for the ace pot and doubles. That's funny. <laughs> I think that's what MJ was talking about right there.
even though it's easy, it's still fun. It's always good to have a chance at an ace while you're at it. Oh, sure. Star frame from the card. Whole well, 15, 240 feet up and over the hill in this beautiful field. No real danger unless you swing it out to the right or go long into the woods. Most of these guys are throwing putter here. Maybe a mid range, but mostly putter. Yep, and just glide it over the hill and let it settle down near the basket. Looked like Ryan just about nailed it perfectly. See if Stevie can hit this long putt. Very nice. Great putt. There's another one. Oh, doink. Ben was playing great coming in. He was 11 down through 14. Hate to give that one up. Three out of four birdies on that one. Hole 16 sweeps uh, left to right. Par 3, 215 foot. Little blind shot. Like I said, the risk on this one is rollaways. Uh, on the rocky terrain, it'll get you every time. That looks like a pretty decent line if you don't hit an early tree. I heard something from Ryan on that. Yeah, it's on that tight on that right side, sometimes it gets you. Hey, that's a beautiful throw. It's a nice, easy gliding turnover. It comes to a soft rest on the hill. That one. A little surprised to see a forehand from MJ here. Yeah. I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind being up there. Nice. Oh, I thought you could nail that route. Good try, but he was blocked by some pretty big trees between him and the basket there. I think that's a good image there that shows you how the elevation can come into play on this hole. You catch an edge, and the disc will roll and roll and roll. I think I've found myself in the middle of 18's fairway more than once. Just makes you want to take the penalty throw and go back to your previous lie, practically. 
the birdie? Solid birdies from Ben and Steven, pars from MJ and Ryan. Hole 17, a soft little touch shot coming downhill. Danger is hitting early, of course, or just gliding well past the basket. Sometimes people just do little jump putts off the tee. Beautiful throw. Now I do see people throw a lot of overheads on this hole, so uh, this is one they do like to do it on. Wow, no play at all. Well, if it works that well. There you go. Good ace run on that. It's tough to have a good ace run and still come to rest in an easy putt. Mm -hmm. That's the danger, it's just gliding a little bit too long and leaving yourself as a hard comebacker. Good putt. Three good birdies from Ben, and Ryan, and Steven. MJ with the par. So final hole of the day, hole 18, it's a par three, 370 feet. That creek on your right is OB all the way down, and if you get too far left in those trees, it can be a heck of a, a tough upshot. Good throw, but just didn't quite have the distance. Looks like a forehand from Mr. Wolf. Very nice. That'll put. Good shot inside the circle. Going straight to OB, but the trees saved him. You'll take it. Yeah, that'll be a tough up and down. I've been there before for MJ. Good up shot from Ryan. Yeah, he's got some stuff in front of him. There's some small windows, but uh, he got through it okay. Hard. There's a birdie. Great birdie from Ben to have a great round. 
14 down overall from Ben. That's fantastic golf. Looks like Ben Wolf's got your lead. Uh, got Ryan Ma right there with them. Steven Scoggins and MJ right there with them. That ends round two back nine. We'll catch you next time for round three.